What's up, everybody? It is Desiree LeCap, aka LeCapture, back on your screen with another dope video. You already know. In this video, it will be a continuation slash part two from my previous video where I broke down color grading and where you could color grade from scratch. Although this is a part two from my previous color grading video, I will be coloring a different clip. But make sure you check out the video linked right here because there are some tips and tricks that I may not mention in this video. But before we color from scratch in Premiere Pro, let's go through my camera gear and settings. So I use my Sony a7S III with my Sigma 18-35mm lens attached to it. I also had a circular polarizer attached to my lens because I knew I was going to be filming through my car window so I didn't want any reflections. If you don't know what a circular polarizer is, it does help with releasing the reflection when you're shooting through a window and it also helps with bringing those blues into the skies and a lot of other things but this is why I had it specifically for these clips. My camera settings were pretty straightforward it was 24 frames per second 1 over 50 the 180 rule I believe my f-stop was at 1.8 for the actual mount I did use a car mount it is a pretty strong car mount for the price that I got it at don't worry I definitely tested it out before I was driving around and I was driving pretty slow too, so, you know, heart attack the entire time. But all the gear that I've used is linked down in the description below. And for my color profile, I always shoot an S-Log3 and I make sure that my exposure is somewhere between plus 1.0 to 2.0 and nothing exposed after that or else I would kind of lose the detail in the highlights. All right, on to part two with the color grading process where you can color from scratch without using any LUTs. I already have it duplicated for that mist effect that I like. So this is without the mist and this is with it. Very, very slight adjustment. And this is the vignetting I was talking about. So this is complete 18 millimeter from the cropped censored Sigma lenses on my full frame camera. So this is the effect that I grab. And honestly, I like it sometimes, it fits the vibe. So I'm gonna just keep it for this. So same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and add my adjustment layer. The first one's always going to be my basic color correction, which is the LUT that I've created. And if you film in S-Log3, I've included this LUT down in the description below for you to just download for free. Then I'm going to go ahead and add my second adjustment layer. And it, obviously, I think it's too bright. So I'm going to turn the highlights down here to get those blues back. So we're crushing the highlights down. So also a tip, I never ever mess with exposure because that just affects the entire image and it's just not pleasing at all. So as you can see, if I try to expose it down, it just creates this ugly gray look. So never mess with your exposure, always just mess with your contrast, highlight, shadows, whites, etc. Then I'm gonna go down to curves and I'm gonna go ahead and just add more shadows. So crushing that down and the midtones, just so we get those colors back because it was a little overexposed in my opinion. Just find that good balance there. All right, cool. My third one, we'll go into color grading. So we're gonna go into curves first here, and then we're gonna mess with our hue versus saturation again. Go into my blues. I'm gonna wanna increase the blues in the skies, and then I wanna increase the greens in the trees. So, you could see you can mess with all the curves honestly it really is like your choice however much you want it but that's how i'm increasing my colors either increasing my saturation which kind of increases the entire image but for hue versus saturation for this clip we're doing it a little differently we're just pinpointing what we want saturated which are the blues and the greens in the trees all right so that's what we're doing here for this clip, I am increasing the color by the hue versus saturation curves. So this is with it, this is without it. With it, without it, with it. Super vibrant. Now we're gonna go down to hue versus hue and change the blues. So pinpoint. I kinda want that teal color-ish, not too much. Pretty good with me. And I'm kinda gonna wanna, and I do wanna keep the greens as you can see, I wanted more green, so I'm gonna just bring it down there. And then we're gonna go to our RGB curves and just mess with my reds a little bit. We're gonna pull some away because I do want the greens 
a little more in frame. You always want to go ahead and pull all the way down to see what you're working with then work your way back up to see what the difference is. Cool, now we're going to go into creative and put our shadow tint which is like that orange greenish right there as we like it. And then our highlight tint, similar, kind of depending on what you like, if you want to balance it out. But I kind of like where it's at right now. Yeah, just play around with where it is and what you like. So this is with it and without it. You always want to go back and forth with things. Sometimes it could be too much in some areas. So I'm just going to mess with these a little bit. I usually go back and forth between my adjustment layers and then end up fixing it which is totally normal to do. Okay, so overall, generally what you wanna do when you're coloring, either in Premiere or DaVinci or even Final Cut, is to use nodes or adjustment layers to help separate each step that you color. That way you know what you're doing, you can look at it before and after. Um, it's just more efficient doing it that way. Then to remember that I have my S-Log3 LUT down in the description below, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Two, to remember not to mess with your exposure when you're color correcting or color grading because it's going to affect the entire picture and create this dull look. Unless you are looking for that look, then go ahead. But to just mess with your contrast, your highlights, your shadows, your whites, your blacks in the basic correction or in the curves using the white RGB curve. Third is when you want to saturate a certain color in your clip is to use your hue versus saturation and just create your pinpoints here to increase the saturation. For example, in the skies, making it more blue or in the trees, making it more green or making it dull. In your hue versus hue is where you could change the color of the sky or the trees to a different blue or a different tone of green. So that's basically this video in a gist. I broke down this coloring process and then I gave you some tips and tricks on how you could change colors or add a certain look to it. Overall, if you're just getting into coloring or filmmaking in general, try anything and everything out. See what works for you, see what you like, see what you don't like. What I did in the very beginning was that I downloaded free LUTs from anywhere I could find back then and I threw it on my clips and I just finessed it. I played with the hue, the tint, I changed some things around, but that's how you develop the knowledge to color grade your own stuff from scratch. So don't be afraid to use LUTs to be honest because that's how you learn. You got to try things out. So that's all for this video. If y'all enjoyed it, please give this video a like comment, share, subscribe, because I will be dropping some more educational film tips and tricks, and I'm super excited for what's to come. See y'all at the next video. Peace.